Okay, guys, on the bench today, Harley Benton Progressive Series 24 fret super strat shredder machine here. Let's put new strings on it. Okay, first thing we're going to do, I got my trem block. And it sets underneath here. And then that way you can take all the strings off of it. And it's not going to just completely collapse the tremolo there. It'll stay, it'll stay consistently flat. And so uh, let's go ahead and pull the strings off of this thing. And then with my Ernie Ball string minder, we'll take these off. All six at the same time. This is getting out of here. There's a little bit of dirt I feel under them. They're pretty bad. Then you loosen this, pull the string out, and then tighten her down just to keep that block from falling out. Harley Benton by Floyd Rose. It says it right here. So you would think it would say Floyd Rose by Harley Benton, but it doesn't. It says Harley Benton by Floyd Rose. I'm telling you, Floyd Rose is a human, the man. He's a man. It's a real man. His name is Floyd Rose. It's not. It's a big, huge company, but it was one man, and the company was named after the man. That's actually his name is Floyd Rose. But now Harley Benton is a fictitious, made-up name that is not about a man named Harley Benton. There is no such man as Harley Benton that makes these guitars. And that was a fun YouTube thing back uh, four or five years ago when everybody would tour Toman or, you know, do all this kind of stuff. And, and they would go around and ask, can I talk to Harley Benton? No, there is no such person as Harley Benton. All right, so I've got a razor blade and then I've got some liquid super glue. So I'm going to try to put a little bit on here. Okay, and then I'm going to try to set her down in there. Okay, it's going to just stick to the razor blade. Okay, I think that's about as good as I'm going to get it here. Okay. So it looks like we've got two more spots right here. And then right here. Okay, so hopefully that super glue will run down in that crack. And it will help to prevent that crack from moving around any further. And maybe at the same time, 
it will try to disguise the fact that there was a crack there in the first place. So let's go ahead and let that dry for a few minutes. A few minutes later. So it's been a couple of minutes. Let's, I got another blade. Let's just scrape on this a little bit and see what happens. I think it should be dry. You can kind of see my scrape marks a little bit. There's my front door. Look at that. All right, so that's our repair. What do you guys think? It's, uh, it came right through here somewhere. I can still kind of see it a little bit there. Some of these turned out really good. I can still see that one a little bit, but uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. So that's my quick repair. Okay, this is my Stumac fret file. And I use this thing a lot. I haven't worn it out yet. I think it still works good. I use it on almost every guitar that I restring. And then I set up. And so, just with the rounded side down, I just come along here and I very delicately just roll over the top and try to get that little edge right there. That was my phone. I'm distracted by my phone. Okay, and then I switch over to lefty and do the same thing this direction. And this guitar does have binding, but I don't think that it's going to hurt the binding at all. I think we're safe on this one. This is not binding that is around a really beautiful Gibson or something like that. It's not Gretsch binding. It's Harley Benton binding. And there is a difference. I had one of those old Gretsch guitars that had the binding rot from setting in its case. Okay, let me try to do this and not hit the body. There we go. Oh, oh. There we go. Feels a lot better right there. It's not going to cut you now. Fred Sprout's not a problem. Okay, every guitar gets a little bit of Music Nomad F1 oil. Okay. 
And so you put that on the fingerboard. And I just take an old shop rag and I smear it in here. And um, I, I don't think that I need to do anything else over that super glued area that I just did. I think that's going to look fine. I think it really helped disguise it that there was a crack there. And I know you can still kind of see them. But I don't know if there's really anything else that I can... I can do. You just want it to be smooth so you don't feel it. Yeah, I think we're good. At least it's better than it was, right? Okay, let's get some strings and throw some strings on this thing. And then we'll tune it all up and uh, be done with this video, right? Okay, here's what's in the guitar vault. These are guitars that are hidden from everybody. And this is a strange one. But this is one of those first act. And this is the one that came in the Volkswagen Beetle. So when you bought yourself a buggy back in, what was that, 20... How, how long ago? 2003? Somewhere in that neighborhood. If you bought the little Volkswagen, they would give you this guitar. And there was a there was a way that you could plug this guitar into the dashboard and the stereo system in your Volkswagen buggy. And it would play through the speakers. Very unusual guitar. I know that First Act made that stuff that wasn't very desirable. They made a lot of stuff that you could get at Walmart or at Target or wherever. But this is the desirable model. It's the First Act that came with the Volkswagen Beetle. It's for sale. Give me a call on this one. Okay, to really shine up this frets on this thing. I've got my fret guard and I've got a little bit of thousand grit sandpaper that I have folded over and I just use this sandpaper and I just give these uh, a couple of good swipes here. Okay, let's see if I can get this going. There it goes. I cut the paper kind of small. Fold it over one more time. Let's see here. There we go. Sand them down so when you do a string bend, it feels nice and smooth and super slinky. And again, I do this a lot because. It only takes me, you know, 60 seconds to go through this. And it shines the fret, frets up really nicely. And it doesn't cost any money. A little piece of sandpaper will last a long time. It doesn't cost you anything to do it. And it makes the guitar feel really good when you're doing a string bend. And nowadays, guys, uh, string bend and do vibrato on um, every note that they hit. It's not just like the boomer, boomer bends. It's on almost every note that you hit. All through your chords and all that stuff. Boomer bends.
Okay. 24 frets. There it is. Shined up a little bit. Tried to repair the crack in the in the fret fretboard and I think it I think it was sort of successful. I could probably go through one more time and try it over again because I don't know how much of it sank that super glue. You need the super glue that is real thin and flows really nicely. But I think I did pretty good on it. Let's get some strings. Today's string choice. Today's string choice. Ernie Ball, super slinky, 9 through 42. America's best selling string. Since I tighten these up, I gotta loosen it up a little bit. Slide that down in there, right in the center. Snug it tight, but don't over tighten, cause you'll strip it out. But you want this string to lay right in there. Let me show you. You want it to lay right in the center so that it lays right across that saddle dead down straight through the, the center of it. I've seen it sometimes where the string, especially your high strings, kind of are over on the edge. So that's not so good when they're over there. bought one of those uh, about a year ago I bought one of those EVH Frankies and um, the one string straight from fender was off it wasn't centered nicely in in the saddle and so all you can do is tell yourself come on fender what are you doing Okay, let's let's start the tuning process on this. Uh, when you have a Floyd Rose guitar, it's not just tuning it up, it's kind of a whole process. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go, oh, we're gonna do about a half step down. I see I see wire coming out of that pickup right there. What seems weird. Just get back down in there. Uh, there's G, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A, A sharp, D, D sharp. Okay, we're about a half step down whereabouts, but now when I pull this uh, trem block out, it's going to bring it down and it'll bring it closer to standard tuning. There you go, lift that out. All right, now let's see where we're at. Ooh, F sharp, way too high. Yeah, it's a whole process. A lot of guys absolutely hate anything with a Floyd Rose. I see that all the time in my guitar shop. Nobody wants to deal with having to tune these things.
And sometimes it's it's easier than other times. Sometimes you can start messing with it and it and they kind of fall right, right into tune. And then other times you you gotta mess with it for a long time. And there's a lot of tricks to doing it. And you guys can leave me some comments. What are some of the tricks that you guys have done in the past that's worked really good? Okay, let's see. Here's my E string. And that looks good right there. A string's there. D string is there. G string is very sharp. G string. There's my B. And there's the high E. Okay. But now I want to back out all these fine tuners. And so that we have some, because usually nine times out of ten, your guitar will start to go flat after a little while of playing it. And so you need a lot of room to adjust on your fine tuner. So I lift these up pretty high so that we have some room for future adjustments. And now you also want this bridge, okay, if I can show you this, you want this to lie perfectly flat. And as you can see there, if you guys can see that, it's kind of drooping down a little bit. So it, it would be better if it was setting about right there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in the back here. And they were nice enough to put a back plate on that has a area where we can get in here and we can do an adjustment without taking this back off. So to bring this forward, it's too tight. So we're going to loosen this just a little bit. Good little half turn on each side. And then let's try over again. And now once we tighten it back to pitch, this might be flatter. I say might. But through the years, I've gotten a lot of Floyd Rose guitars. Guitars with Floyds, I've got a lot of them traded in because guys are just sick of trying to tune them. <clears throat> and uh, other guys, it's the only kind of guitar that they will play is something that has a Floyd on it because you, you got to love those whammy bar tricks. Let's see where we're at now. going to do it one more time. Loosen it up. I want that Floyd to be laying perfectly flat so that it has a nice setup. And so people come in the store, they look at it, they play it, they see it's got a nice setup. It really helps to sell the instrument. And then a lot of guys, you know, hey, well, what, what's the whole deal with spending all this time working on a uh, Harley Benton and making sure it's all set up and everything? Because honestly, when I sell this guitar, my profit potential is probably only like 50 or 60 bucks. 
but it's better than letting these things go into a landfill somewhere. And so uh, I, I do my best to uh, string every guitar up and to make the very most out of every guitar and give every guitar a lot of love. There we go. That's looking nice and flat right now. It still could probably do a little bit. One more time. So again, this is one of those things. If you want it just perfect, keep keep on messing with it, right? I almost used the F word right there. Keep messing with it and eventually you will get it and it'll be perfect. But uh, I don't recommend these guitars with a Floyd. When a, when a beginner comes in and goes, hey man, I'm a beginner, I'm learning how to play, what do you recommend? I recommend something with a hard tail instead of anything with a Floyd Rose. I tell all the guys, you don't want a Floyd Rose system because it'll always be out of tune. Wow, something just happened somewhere. One of the springs did something or something. I heard something. Well, I think this string rolled up to the top of its tuner. Okay, here we go. So my E string went really south. We're getting close. We're getting close on this one. the string height is at when I play it. I get some guys that come in here and they can just shred on guitar. And I uh, consider myself a very mediocre guitar player. I play bass in the band that I'm in. I know none of you guys care. But, uh, you know, I watch these shredder guys and I get these young guys that come in and they can shred. And um, like a lot of us, we watch the Jared Dines <clears throat> shred videos and shred collabs that he does. And I think I'm going to do a shred collaboration video on my channel. So look for that. I have a guy right now that is making a um, backing track for me. And um, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to set up a video where I talk all about this Shred Collab and I want all you guys to participate in it. So I'm eventually I'm going to have a link. When I get this backing track, there will be a link in the description where you can click on it. You can get the backing track. You can record your guitar shred. I only need about 30 seconds of you shredding onto this backing track. And then I'm going to edit it all together and have my own Zim's Guitars shred collaboration video. If Jared Dines can do it, we can do it too. And so look for that coming up soon. The Zim's Guitar 
shred collaboration video and I will participate in it somewhere in the middle of the video I will do 10 seconds of me playing guitar uh, you know and trying to do some shreddy stuff but if anything it'll probably be maybe a little slow blues kind of a riff right but look for that video guys all right so back to this thing all right so let's go ahead and lock down this locking nut Snug these babies down, not too tight. Okay, and that will keep the strings. You're not able to use these tuners anymore. Now we have to go down and use our fine tuners. Yeah, so after these strings have all been locked down, then we have to go here to our fine tuners. And there's our A string. Looks good. There's our D string. G. Ooh, our G's right in. Oh, it's a little flat. B string. High E string. There it is, guys. It's a Harley Benton. I like the satin neck finish. Fred ends feel nice on this one now. Yeah, so this one is for sale if you guys want to give me a call or come into the shop. A Harley Benton Progressive Series. Wow, it sounds good. There it is, guys. Thank you so much for watching, restringing guitars. I hope maybe I taught you guys something, but most likely, yeah. Most likely you guys uh, leave me a lot of comments going, hey, you did that wrong, but it's okay. I do what I can do. So here it is. It's a Harley Benton. Still got plastic on it. It's really good condition. She got new strings on it, and she is ready to go on and move on out the door. Somebody give me a call or drop in, okay, because this one is available now. You guys have a great day. Merry Christmas. And 